Hello everyone, this is uh, Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. I'm just going to show you uh, another uh, orbital, um, another type of orbital here real quick. I'm just going to go ahead and open up uh, Adam in a box. We'll bring that up and uh, this is right where we left off <coughs> um, when we were looking at a uh, 3, 2, 0 uh, quantum numbers. N equals 3, L equals 2, M sub L equals 0. And that gives us a 3D orbital. Now I'm going to just go through this real quick and I'm going to change the M sub L because there are different types of D orbitals and, and you can see they uh, take on some pretty pretty bizarre shapes. So I can go as low as uh, negative 2 on my M sub L, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And of course that corresponds uh, with five different types of um, D orbitals, three different types of P orbitals, and uh, one type of s orbital and uh, <clears throat> again uh, you'll have five of these guys uh, three p's and uh, one s in your um, n equals three or your third shell but now let's go ahead and look at another type of orbital or another shell rather I'm going to move on to the fourth shell and if you take a look at the fourth shell um, hopefully none of this will come as a, as a surprise that I have um, 4, 0, 0, which is a 4s wave function, 4s configuration. <clears throat> I have um, uh, now three nodes, a node here, a node here, and a node here. And you can see on my probability density graph, I have uh, a node here, a node here, and a node here, and one, two, three, four um, the spheres of probability density with the uh, most probable uh, radius being at 24.6 um, a sub naught or uh, 24.6 Bohr radii. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and look at the um, f orbital which is going to be a, a quantum number is going to take uh, the l quantum number will take on three so one um, there we have a 4p orbital um, and again, just like the s orbital, there are many more nodes um, as we go up in n number. Um, there is a 4d orbital. As you can see, it's even uh, more mm -hmm. abstract um, than the 3d orbital. Mm -hmm. And now, finally, we're to the f orbital. Mm -hmm. And you can see this is just taking on some really bizarre shapes of probability density. Um, and we'll go ahead and just cycle through the uh, M sub L, the magnetic number, and you can just see, hopefully you can appreciate just some of these really odd um, um, configurations, you know, really unique, really unique configurations. And it should come as no surprise that I have lots and lots of uh, more and more nodes, uh, radial and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, radial nodes, and uh, is, uh, your angular nodes as we go up in, um, in, in numbers. So I'll tell you what, I'll take it all the way up to n equals 7. <clears throat> and here we have a 7f mm -hmm. orbital, and hopefully you can just appreciate just how, how much there is to this, how many areas um, and different lobes and, and, and aspects there are to that. Um, here I have a 7g orbital, which is, uh, you know, mm -hmm. theoretically... Um, which is more of a, a theoretical um, orbital. Um, let's go ahead and just take a look at some like 7D uh, orbital. Just really, really interesting uh, shapes. And again, um, the binding energy is just incredibly low at 0.028 electron volts. Um, and look at where my, obviously I have lots and lots of nodes, but look at where my most probable radius is with a 7D. 78.8 Bohr radii. That's uh, a Bohr radius. Uh, a sub naught is about 0 0.54 angstrom. So 0 0.54 times uh, almost 80. You're talking about you know the nucleus way, way, way in there, and then all this area of probability density uh, surrounding it. So this is a rather large atom, um, hydrogen atom, and obviously <clears throat> this kind of configuration is is not probably not commonly seen you know under normal circumstances on Earth, but um, certainly in, in uh, certain circumstances. Okay guys, hopefully you found these uh, videos interesting and have more of an intuitive uh, understanding of, of, of what it means uh, when we talk about orbitals. Take care.